She'll live. Thank God. You're a pair of lucky parents. I can tell you now, I thought she would. Nonsense. The child's a kettle. She has the constitution of a goat. She'll let us off. Yes. Especially if some of you Kellers don't get a night's sleep. I mean you, Mrs. Keller. You here, Katie? I hear. I brought up two of them, but this is my wife's first. She isn't battle-scarred yet. Doctor, don't be merely considerate. Will my girl be all right? Oh, by morning she'll be knocking down Captain Keller's fences again. Isn't there anything we should do? Put up stronger fencing? Just let her get well. She knows how to do it better than we do. Main thing is the fever's gone. These things come and go in infants, never know why. Call it acute congestion of the stomach and brain. I'll see you till you buggy, Doctor. I've never seen a baby with more vitality, that's for sure. Hush! Don't you cry now. You've been trouble enough. Call it acute congestion indeed. I don't see what's so cute about a congestion just because it's yours. <laughs> Have your father run an editorial in his paper. The one is a modern medicine. They don't know what they're carrying, even when they carry it. Men. Men and their battle scars. We women will have to. We'll have to. Helen? Helen? Katie, he 
king. A father stands up, that makes it a fact. You be quiet. Imagine it up by females without your idiot. Caden, I might as well try to work in a hay yard as in this house. You really ought to put her away, father. What? A summer asylum, it's the kindest thing. Why, she's your sister, James. Not a nobody. A half-sister. And half mentally defective. She can't even keep herself clean. It's not pleasant to see her about all the time. Do you dare complain of what you can see? This discussion is at an end. I'll thank you not to broach it again, Anne. Oh, Arthur. I've done as much as I can bear. I can't give my whole life to it. The house is at sixes and sevens from one until matter with the girl. It's time some attention was paid to Mildred here instead. Now wake her up, Captain. I want some peace in this house. I don't care how. But one way we won't have it by rushing up and down the country every time someone hears of a new quack. I'm as sensible to this affliction as anyone. It hurts me to look at the girl. It was not our affliction I meant you to write of, Captain. <laughs> Helen, my buttons! Eyes? She wants a doll to have eyes. My goodness me, I'm not decent. <laughs> she doesn't know better, Aunt Ev. I'll sew them on for you again. Never learn of everyone letting her do anything she takes it into her mind to. You be quiet. What did I say now? You talk too much. I was agreeing. Whatever it was. Deprived child. The least she can have is all the things she wants. Possible. I must warn you, she is much given to tantrums. 
Well, it means something's inside. Well, so am I if I believe all I hear. Maybe you should warn them. Annie, I wrote them no word of your mystery. You'll find yourself among strangers now who know nothing of it. Well, we'll keep them in a state of less ignorance. Perhaps you should tell them. Why? I have enough trouble with people who don't even know. So they will understand when you do have trouble. The only time I have trouble is when I'm right. Is it my fault it's so often? <laughs> I won't give them any trouble, Mr. Amigos. I'll be so ladylike they won't even notice I've come. Annie, be humble. It is not as if you have so many offers to pick and choose. You won't need their affection working with this child. I hope I won't need their pity. Oh, we can all use some pity. So, we throw you into the world, a teacher, if the child can be taught. No one expects you to work miracles, even for $25 a month. Now, in this envelope, a loan for the railroad, which you will repay me when you have a bank account. But in this box, a gift with our love. I think some other friends are ready to say goodbye. Mr. Edmonds. Dear Mr. Edmonds, I... Well, what should I say? I'm an ignorant, opinionated girl. And everything I am, I owe to you. <laughs> that is only half true, Annie. Which half? <laughs> I crawled in here like a drowned rat. I thought I died when Jimmy died. That I'd never again come alive. Well, you say with love so easy. And I haven't loved a soul since. And I never will, I suppose. But this place, it gave me more than my eyes back. Or taught me how to spell, which I never learned anyway. But with all the fights and the trouble I've been in here, it taught me what help is and how to live again. And I don't want to say goodbye. Don't open the door. I'm crying. They will not see. <coughs> Annie? Here, Beatrice. There's a present. We want you all going to wait. Yes, Mona, you shouldn't have. We did.
me. I can't wait to see her body. Maybe she ain't even gonna be on this train neither. Maybe she is. And maybe she ain't. And maybe she is. Where's Helen? Oh, she's upstairs smelling around. She knows something funny is going on. Let Helen have a supper as soon as Mildred's in bed. And tell the captain when he comes we'll be delayed tonight. Again? I don't think we need to say again. Simply delayed will do. I mean, that's what he's gonna say. What, again? Well, Dr. Howe said that. 
language. We can't get through to teach you to sit still. You are young, despite your years to have such confidence. Do you inside? No. To tell you the truth, I'm as shaky inside as a baby. Right? Don't be. We'll do all we can to help and make you feel alone. We'll give up to strangers. <coughs> You spell pretty well. <laughs> uh, what is it, a game? An alphabet. Alphabet? For the death. Oh, how bright she is. You think she knows what she's doing? She imitates everything. She's a monkey. Yes, she's a bright little monkey, all right. 
Because they climb down and hold Oh, no, it's very similar to you, but I really prefer to... Miss Sullivan, follow instructions. I'll not have you tumbling out of our windows as well. I hope this is not an example of who I may expect from you in the ways of lessening the work of looking after him. I'm sorry to inconvenience you in this way. No inconvenience, other than having that door taken down and the lock replaced, if we fail to find the key. Oh, I'll we'll look everywhere for it. Thank you. You're not looking in any rooms that can be locked. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Go! Go back to your work! What are you looking at here? There's nothing to look at here. Now, would it be possible for us to have supper like other people? Might as well leave the L A D D E R.
are you saying to her? Well, I was just making conversation, saying it was a sewing card. What does that mean that to her? No. She won't know what spelling is till she knows what the word is. Can't you keep spelling to her? Why? I like to hear myself talk. <laughs> the cat says it's like spelling from a Venice post. Does he know? Is it? No. It's how I watch you talk to Mildred. Mildred. Any baby. Huh. Gibberish, growing up gibberish, baby talk gibberish. Do they understand a word of it from the start? Somehow they begin to. If they hear it. And I'm letting Helen hear it. But other children are not impaired. Oh, there's nothing impaired in that head. It works like a mouse trap. But after a child, there's how many words, Miss Annie? A million? I guess no mother's ever minded enough to count. What did she say? I spelled card and she spelled cake. No. It's only a finger game to her, Mrs. Keller. What she has to learn first is that everything has its name. When will she learn? Maybe after a million and one words. I should like to learn those letters, Miss Annie. Well, I'll teach her tomorrow morning. That only makes half a million each. It's her bedtime. <coughs> Why does she get a reward for stabbing me? Oh. Well, we catch our flies with honey, I'm afraid. We haven't the heart for much else. So many times she simply cannot be compelled. Yes. I'm the same way myself. Well enough when I see one. And a badly spoiled child. Here, here. 
anymore. And not to lecture. I cannot let teacher six years of pity if you cannot stand up to one tantrum. Oh, Stonewall, indeed. Mrs. Keller, you promised me help. If I did, we truly want to leave me alone with her. Now. Kate, will you come outside with me at once, please?
me twice before locking up with that kind. That man, John L. Not your father. Now you give me Hermes Kate and I'll take her back to her crib. This one never gives me a minute's worry. Oh no, this one's the angel of the family. This soul, this blind, deaf, mute woman, can nothing be done to disinter this human soul? The whole neighborhood would rush to save this woman if she were buried alive by the caving in of a pit and labor with zeal until she were dug out. Now if there were one who had as much patience as zeal, he might awaken her to a consciousness of her immortal. Hey, any of there? Hush. Annie, what's that noise? It's just a cop, Ginny. Where are they pushing it? To the dead house. Annie, does it hurt to be dead? There are schools. There are schools outside. There are schools where they teach blind ones worse than you. To read. To read and write. There are schools outside. Where they... There are schools. You ain't going to school, are you, Annie? When I grow up. You ain't done, Annie. But stay here. Take care of me. I'm going to school when I grow up. Never, never, you said- I'm going to school when I grow up! Little girl, little girl, I must tell you, your brother will be going on a journey soon. Annie! Goodbye, Annie. Write just when you learn how. Don't tell anyone where you came from. Don't tell anyone. Yeah, don't tell anyone you came from here. Yeah, don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. Annie, it hurts to be dead. Forever. Might awaken her to a consciousness of her immortal nature. The chance is small indeed, but with a smaller chance they would have dug desperately for her in the pit. And is the life of the soul of less importance than that of the body? Helen did fold her napkin. What in heaven's sakes is 
so extraordinary about holding a neck? Well, it's more than you did, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, I did not bring that kid to the garden house to be frivolous. Now, have Miss Sullivan proposed to teach a deaf-blind pupil who won't even let it touch I don't know. The fact is, she's got any chance of ever getting along with the girl. If you can see any point of purpose of her staying on here longer, it's more than I... What do you wish me to do? I want you to give a notice. I can't. Well, if you can't, then I must. I simply will not Hello. have it. Miss Sullivan. Captain Keller, Bonnie told me I would find you both out here. I think we should have a talk. Yes, well, uh, come in. Okay. Captain. Yeah. I, uh, wanted first to make my position clear to Mrs. Kelly in private. I have decided I am not satisfied. In fact, I am deeply displeased. Excuse me. Is this little house ever in use? In the hunting season. If you'll give me your attention, Miss Sullivan. Now, I have tried to make allowances for you because you come from a part of the country where women are uh, people, I should say. <laughs> come from whom? Well, allowances must be made. Nevertheless, I have decided to... <coughs> that is, I decided I... Uh, Miss Sullivan, I find it very difficult to talk through those glasses. Oh, of course. Why do you wear them? The sun's been down for an hour. Any kind of light hurts my eyes. Put them on. Miss Sullivan, I have decided to give you another chance. <laughs> <laughs> to do what? To remain in our employ, but on two conditions. I am not accustomed to rudeness in servants or women, and that is the first. If you are to stay, there must be a radical change of men. Who's? Yours, young lady, isn't it obvious? <laughs> and the second is that you persuade me there's the slightest hope of you teaching a deaf blind pupil who flees from you now like the plague to anyone else she can find in the house. There isn't. What, Miss Annie? It's hopeless here. I can't teach a child who runs away. Then do I understand that you propose? Well, if we all agree it's hopeless. Miss Annie, I am not agreed. I think perhaps you underestimate Heaven. I think everybody else here does. She folded her napkin. She learned. You know, she began speaking when she was only six months old. She could say water. Not really. Wawa. But she meant water. She knew what it meant. When she was six months old. I never saw a child so bright without color. It's still in her somewhere, isn't it? You should have seen her before her illness. Such a good-tempered child. She's changed. Up with it. And with us, Mrs. Us? Please, Mrs. Keller. I don't think Helen's worst handicap is deafness or blindness. I think it's your love. And pity. Now what is that? All of you here are so sorry for her. You kept her like a pet. Why even a dog, you housebreak? No wonder she won't let me come near her. It's useless for me to try to teach her language or anything else here. Sammy, before you came, we spoke of putting her in an asylum. What kind of asylum? For mental defectives. I visited there. I can't tell you what I saw. People like animals with rats in the halls and what else are we to do if you give up? <coughs> give up? You said it was up here. Give up? Why, I only saw today what has to be done to begin. I want complete control of her. You already have that. It has resulted no. in... No. I mean, day and night, she has to be dependent on me. For what? Everything. The food she eats, the clothes she wears, fresh air. Yes, the air she breathes. <coughs> Everything her body needs is a primer to teach her how to. The one who lets her have it should be her teacher. Not anyone who loves her. You have so many feelings, they fall all over each other like feet. You won't use your chances and you won't let me. But if she runs from you to us? Yes. I'll have to live with her somewhere else. What? Till she learns to depend on and listen to me. How long? As long as it takes. I've packed half my things already. Miss Sullivan! Captain Kelly, it meets both your conditions. It's the one way I can get back in touch with Helen. And I don't see how I can be rude to you again if you're not around to interfere with me. <laughs> and what is your intention if I say no? Pack the other half in the van. 
may need a charge to, to... To the asylum? I grew up in such an asylum. The state owns her. My brother Jimmy and I used to play with the rats because we didn't have toys. Maybe you would like to know what Helen would find there. Not on visiting days. One ward is full of the old women. Crippled and blind, most of them dying. But even if what they had was catching, there was nowhere else to move them, and that's where they put us. There were younger ones across the hall. Prostitutes mostly with TB and epileptic fits. And a couple of the kind who keep after other girls. Especially young ones. And some insane. Some just had the DTs. The youngest were in another ward to have babies they didn't want. They started at 13 and 14. They left afterwards. The babies stayed, and we played with them too. Though a lot of them had sores all over their bodies from diseases you're not supposed to talk about. And not many of them lived. The first year, there were 80. 70 died. The room where Jimmy and I played in was the dead house, where they kept the bodies till they could dig the graves. No. It made me strong. But I don't think you need to send Helen there. She's strong enough. Sunny. <coughs> Where would you take Helen? Oh. Italy? What? You can't have everything. How <laughs> would this garden house do? You can bring Helen here after a long ride so she doesn't recognize it. And you can see her every day if she doesn't know what's at all. That's all. Can with your permission. Why must she depend on you for the food she eats? I want control of it. Why? It's a way to reach her. You did not starve her to let you touch her? She won't starve. She'll learn. All's fair in loving war, Captain Keller. You never cut supplies? This is hardly a war. Well, it's not, though. A siege is a siege. Miss Sullivan, do you like the child? You could have a servant here. You will have enough trouble without having to look after a servant. But that boy Percy could sleep here and run here. We could let Percy sleep here, I think. Yeah. And this old furniture, all of our house. I have not yet considered a Percy. Order the house. Order the proposal. Order the soul and stay on the lap. Very well. I agree to everything. <laughs> two weeks. You'll have two weeks, Miss Sullivan. And you'll be a miracle if you get the child to tolerate you. Two weeks? Can you accomplish anything in two weeks? Anything or not. Two weeks. Then the child comes back to us. Make up your mind, Miss Sullivan. Yes or no? Two weeks. For only one miracle. I'll get her to tolerate me. love as you said, or you wouldn't stay. I didn't come here for love. I came for money. A. The first of May, 26. Do I know? I lost my temper and here we are. No touching, no teaching. 
Of course, sir. You are bigger. I'm not counting on force. I'm counting on her. That little imp is dying to know. Know what? Anything. Any and every crumb in God's creation. I'll have to use that appetite, too. Maybe she'll teach you. Of course. Uh, that she isn't. There's such a thing as a dullness of heart. Acceptance and letting go. Sooner or later, we all give up, don't we? Maybe you do. It's my idea of the original sin. What is? Giving up. You won't open her. Why can't you see that? Have some pity on her for being what she is. If I ever thought like that, I'd be dead. You will be. Why trouble? Or will you teach me?
statue. Hmm? Touch and go and no blood lost. But here we go. You can go to bed now. You earned your sleep. Frog 
must jump out. It had been better. For everyone. If only there were someone to help me. I need a teacher as much as Helen. Kate, what does he want from me? That's not the question. Stand up to the world, Jimmy. That comes first. But the world is him. Yeah. And no one can do it for you. Kate, could you be my friend? I am. My mind is so undisciplined, full of skips and jumps and... Disinter, disinterested, disjoin, disinterested, disjoin. Where is discipline? What's a dictionary? Have to know how to spell it before you can look up how to spell it. Disciple, discipline, discipline. Sure. <laughs> you can stand there 
if she comes. Sunny, they can't know how anxious we are to have her back in our office. I do know. It's my main worry. It's like expecting a new child. She's so content, so attractive. You've done wonders for her, Miss Sullivan. Have I? If there's anything you want in repayment, tell us. It'll be a privilege. I just told Mrs. Keller. I want more Miss time. Annie. Another week. Miss Sullivan, we miss the child. I miss her. I'm happy to say that whatever kind of debt I owe you. Pay it to Helen. Give her another week. Doesn't she miss us? Of course she does. What a rich this unexplainable exile must be. Can you say it's not? No. But doesn't she need affection too, Miss Annie? <clears throat> She never shows me she needs it. She won't have any caressing or... But you're not her mother. And what would another week accomplish? We're more than satisfied with what you've done for her. Try to construct a I can't you, promise anything. Like All I can do is... like a human child. So manageable. Contented. Cleaner. Cleaner? Well, we say cleanliness is next to godliness, Miss Sullivan. Cleanliness is next to nothing. What she has to learn first is that everything has its name. That words can be her eyes to the world outside her and inside too. What is she without words? With them, she can think, have ideas be reached. There's not a thought or fact in the world that can't be hers. You publish a newspaper, Captain Keller. Do I have to tell you what words are? And she has so many. Eighteen knowns and three verbs. They're in her fingers now. I only need time to push one of them into her mind. One. And everything under the sun will follow. Don't you see that what she's learned here is only clear in the way for that? I cannot risk her unlearning it. Give me more time alone with her. Another week! Look! What is she spelling? Water? Teaching a doll to spell. The doll doesn't know what she means any more than she knows what you mean, Miss Sullivan. I think you ask too much of her, and yourself. God may have not been failed to have these eyes you speak of. I need her, too. What's it to you? You tell us what we indulge it for our sake. Is the opposite true for you? How can we? An agreement is an agreement. Mrs. Keller! I'll her back. I'll send Viney over to help you pack. Not until 6 o'clock. I have her until 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. Come, Katie.
M-O-T-H-E-R. Mother. M-O-T-H-E-R. General. Will you take a grace, Jimmy? <laughs> Certainly. And Jacob was left alone to wrestle with an angel until the breaking of the day. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And the angel said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And Jacob said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. Amen. Oh, you angel. That's a very strange grace, James. Will you start with the muffin tail? It's from the good book, isn't it? Well, why, of course it is. Didn't you know? Can this any? Please. Yes, I knew. Then why ask? I meant it is from the good book, and therefore a fitting grace. Yes. Well, I don't know about that. There's an awful lot of things in the good book that I wouldn't care to hear just before eating. Well, fitting in the 
since that the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint, and so is this piggy's. I declare, Why, yes. You know my opinion, your pickles. Those are the last time I'm afraid. Didn't put up nearly enough last summer. This year I intend to. Graver looked in at the office today and complained his head to stop blinking. Poor fellow. He was out of joint. All he could do. I've always suspected those hands. Well, what? I think they're papers. Has he tried? Oh, James. Now you call him my lord's service. The first thing you know will be.
teaching. Teacher.